welcome to the third lecture of uh, basic circuits uh, basic electrical circuits and uh, in the last class we looked at uh, some basic elements which were linear elements and also independent voltage and uh, current sources we will continue from there in this uh, class okay now as uh, this title says it uh, talks about elements in series and parallel and superposition and so on so like i had said we will also go by how fast we are going in uh, each class and then what we did in a previous class and so on so that we don't lose continuity so what we'll do is we will look at the elements in some more detail and then see what happens when we connect them in series and parallel okay so before i start any questions about the previous class Okay, there is a question from Vishal Goswami. What is the question? Hello? What is the question? Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll uh, go to my notes and then uh, start sharing that. Okay. The previous lecture we discussed independent sources. independent sources one of which was the independent voltage source what it does is to maintain a given voltage v naught across its terminals okay and it can carry any current okay this uh, what it means is the voltage source itself will not impose any restriction on the current the restriction will come from whatever circuit it is connected to. That is the property of an independent voltage source. And the independent current source will maintain a current flow of a given value through itself okay and the voltage across that can be anything okay so we looked at these and these have iv characteristics which basically means the uh, if i plot i versus v which are straight lines not passing through the origin okay unless coincidentally the voltage source value or the current source value happens to be zero okay unless uh, that happens the straight lines are not passing through the origin which means that these are not linear elements okay now uh, what is the definition of linearity we said that linear elements obey superposition in that sense they will not obey superposition because clearly the voltage across a voltage source will be equal to v naught no matter what current flows through it so clearly if you have two different values of current and then you add up the voltage source values you voltage values you will not get the resultant voltage when uh, the sum of currents is passing through the voltage source okay similarly for the current source now in addition to this we also looked at a certain uh, number of uh, linear elements and 
this means that they obey superposition. Now, in case of electrical elements, the uh, variables of interest are voltage and current. Uh, so, if V1 gives you a current I1, V2 gives you a current I2, then what superposition says is that alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 will give you a current alpha 1 I1 plus alpha 2 I2. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, what is meant by superposition and this has to be true uh, if the element has to be linear and also if this is true the element is definitely linear. Now, which are the linear elements we looked at? The resistor R whose voltage and current are related by a proportionality constant R which is the resistance. and a capacitor C whose voltage and current are related by the time derivative and the C is the capacitance and finally, the inductor whose voltage and current are related by a time derivative but in the opposite direction and this L is the inductance. Okay. So, now all of these are linear elements. In case of the resistance, it is uh, pretty obvious why it is linear. It is a proportional, uh, the relationship is proportional and uh, that will give you linearity. And in case of capacitance and inductance, this time derivative is a linear operator and hence these elements are also linear, okay, which means that they will follow this principle. And it can also be in the other direction. That is, if uh, I1 gives you V1 and I2 gives you V2, alpha 1 I1 plus alpha 2 I2 will give you alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2. Okay. So, that is uh, essentially what we discussed in the previous lecture. Now, what we will do now is to uh, consider some imp simple interconnections of uh, these elements okay, and see what they result in. Now, first let us consider these elements in uh, series and parallel. Okay. Now, what does it mean? We are of course talking about two terminal elements. Now, if you have two elements, what is meant by a series connection? Series connection means that one element of one terminal is connected to an sorry, one terminal of one of the elements is connected to uh, a terminal of the other element okay? and nothing else is connected to this. Okay? So, this one of the terminals of this element number 1 is connected to one of the terminals of element number 2 and to that point nothing else is connected. Now, what this enforces by Kirchhoff's current law is that the same current is flowing through the two elements. Okay. So, a feature of series connection is that same current through the two elements. Okay. A 
Is there a problem with viewing the notepad again? Okay, it looks like most people are able to uh, see the notepad, so I am going to continue. As I was saying, uh, in series connection of two elements, you will have one terminal of one of the elements connected to one terminal of the other element with nothing else connected. And what it enforces is the same current through both elements. Okay, so that uh, a feature of series connection is that the same current will flow through the two elements. Similarly, what happens in a parallel connection is that one terminal of the first element is connected to one terminal of the other element and also the other terminals are connected together. Okay. Basically, uh, some uh, one terminal of uh, each element is connected to one terminal of the other element and also the other terminals are connected together and what it enforces is an equal voltage across the two elements. Okay. Obviously, by KVL, the voltage across this and the voltage across that have to be exactly the same. Okay, If you consider this uh, connection between two elements as a loop, then the voltage will be enforced to be the same by Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, for parallel connection, we will have same voltage across the two elements. Okay. So, with this in mind, we can see what happens to each element as we uh, connect them in series or parallel. Okay. So, first let us consider the independent voltage source. So, let us say I have a voltage source of uh, volume V1 and a voltage source of volume V2 and we connect them in series. Okay, That is this node is the common uh, node for the uh, one terminal of each element. And what I want to find out is what does this entire thing look like from these two terminals. Okay. There is a question. What is the question? Hello? Okay. So, what is the what does it look like looking from these two terminals? I would like answers from the participants. When we connect these two voltage sources in series, the middle voltage is uh, uh, middle terminal is uh, middle node is common to the two uh, elements. So, we have one terminal here and another terminal there. So, if you look at it, the entire thing looks like a single two terminal element. Okay. So, what will it look like between these two terminals? So, as a couple of people answered, this will uh, the voltage across these two terminals would be V1 plus V2. Okay. So. Now, this is so simple that I think all of you know the answer, but I will just uh, show you how to do it formally. You can imagine some branch completing this loop and you apply KVL around this loop. The voltage drop across this in this direction plus the 
the voltage drop across this in the same uh, consistent direction. Okay, and finally, the voltage drop across this, and it has to be in the consistent direction, which is like that, has to be zero. Okay, so that means that in this polarity, it will be minus V1 minus V2. Or if I take the upper one and the lower upper one as plus and lower one as minus, it is V1 plus V2. Okay, so the bottom line is a series combination of voltage sources appears like a single voltage source of value equal to the sum of the voltage sources. Okay, and we can have more than one in uh, more than two in series. So voltage sources in series equals sum of individual voltage sources. Okay. I think there is no confusion about this. Now the next thing is what happens if you connect voltage sources in parallel? What will happen? That is, I connect this voltage source and that voltage source in parallel. Again, I would like answers from the participants. Okay, there were many answers and some of them said this connection is not possible and that is correct. There are many ways to think about it. Here, first of all, the first voltage source is enforcing a voltage V1 between these two terminals and this voltage source is enforcing, trying to enforce a voltage V2 between these two term, the same two terminals. So, I see clearly there is a contradiction and that is not possible. Alternatively, you can think of this whole thing as a loop and write KVL around it and the sum of voltages would be V1 minus V2 which cannot be 0 unless V1 happens to be equal to V2. Okay. So, basically to resolve this we say that the parallel connection of voltage sources is not allowed. Okay. Now this is uh, this gives you an inconsistent condition unless V1 equals V2. Okay, so unless V1 equals V2, you cannot make this correct connection. So you cannot connect voltage sources in parallel. So I hope that is clear. Yeah, there is a question from Ayush Dubey. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, it, but practically we can, practically we can connect two voltage sources in parallel. So, what is the result in practical? So, the question is, uh, in practice, if I take two voltage sources and connect them in parallel, what happens? Now, first of all, there are many ways to resolve this. Yes, sir. Is whatever you get in practice will not be an ideal voltage source, right? It will not be able to hold a voltage of V1 regardless of what current is drawn from it. So, what will happen is if you connect two voltages, I mean, for instance, two batteries of uh, unequal uh, voltages in parallel, there will be some current flowing which will change the voltages of each battery, okay? That is basically what happens. 
So the bottom line is there is no such thing as an ideal uh, uh, battery, ideal voltage source. Okay, so you can connect things in parallel. There will be some current that is flowing, and the voltage across each battery will be different from the ideal value. Okay, so that's what happens. Now I think many of you also know that. If you have a real battery that will be modeled not by just a voltage source, but a voltage source in series with a resistance. Okay, so you really cannot have these uh, independent voltage sources which are ideal. This is a useful concept in circuit analysis and a useful approximation in many cases, but you really cannot do that. Okay, another way to think about it is that you have this uh, net voltage of V1 minus V2 across some wires which have zero resistance. So that means that uh, if you have V1 minus V2 which is not zero across zero resistance, the current through the zero resistance has to be infinite. Okay. So if you have, do have an infinite current, you can have some voltage drop. Now what it again really means in practice is that if you take two voltage sources or two power supplies of unequal voltages and connect them in parallel, a very large current will tend to flow through them and possibly damage the power supplies. Okay. Now there were also other answers like uh, uh, the maximum of the two voltages will appear. No, that is not correct. Okay, you, this connection is simply not allowed. Now we can look at current sources in a similar way. Let's say I have a current I1 and another current source of uh, current I2 in parallel. Okay, that is both the terminals are common to the two elements. Now again we this looks like some two terminal element here and there. The question is, what does it look like looking at those two terminals? Okay, answers please quickly. Okay, I think again the answer is pretty obvious. This is looked like a current source of value I1 plus I2 and it is very easy to see. Basically you want to find out what current is going there and by Kirchhoff's law at this node, Kirchhoff's current law at this node, you see that whatever is going in here has to equal the current going in this plus the current going in that. Okay, so it forms a current source of value I1 plus I2. And you can have more than two current sources. So if you have multiple current sources in parallel, it is equivalent to single source with uh, current equal to sum of individual currents. Okay. And we can quickly look at what happens if we have current sources in series. Okay. Now, just like uh, with the voltage sources in parallel, you see that unless I1 happens to be exactly equal to I2, 
KCL at this node, at this middle node, is not valid. Okay, is not uh, obeyed. If I one is not equal to I two, okay. So we say that series connection of current sources is not allowed. Okay, so unless I one happens to be equal to I two, you cannot connect current sources in series. And you can see that uh, it's complementary to what happens in a voltage source. You cannot connect voltage sources in parallel. You can connect them in series, and you cannot connect current sources in series. You can connect them in parallel. Okay. Next, let's look at uh, resistors. In uh, series and uh, parallel. Okay. So if I look at a series connection of resistors, I have R1, R2, and the question is what it looks like from between these two terminals. Okay, answers please. Okay, again I think the answer is known to a lot of people and it is that it is equivalent to a single resistance of value R1 plus R2. Okay, now while this answer is known, it is also important to be able to derive this by yourselves. Again, this is a very trivial derivation, but for those of you who don't know, I will do it here and show it. Because anything that you calculate, you should be able to do with confidence. Okay, you should be able to say why it is R1 plus R2, and from the basic circuit laws and the definition of resistance, we will be able to do that. Okay. Now the easiest way to do that is, I want to find out what happens between these two terminals. Now one general thing is that let's say you are given a box. With two terminals, we are talking about electrical circuits. Uh, internally, there are some circuits, and two terminals are uh, exposed to the outside. And you are asked to find out what is inside. Okay, the only way, the only thing you can do is to find the I V characteristic. You define I and V correctly, V with plus on top, and I going into the upper terminal. Obviously, the same I will come out of the lower terminal because there is no net. Charge accumulation inside this element. So you have to determine the IV characteristics, and that will tell you what this element is, what it behaves like, and so on. Okay. And to do that, you either apply a voltage source with a value V and determine I, or apply I and determine v okay so this is a systematic uh, procedure that you will use repeatedly okay so in this course you will later see you will be asked like what is the equivalent of this circuit or that circuit and the way to find out is by applying a voltage and determining the current or applying a current and determining the voltage So now let's do that for our combination. In this case, what I'll do is apply a current I. I'll call it I test because that's what I'm using to test what's happening between these two terminals. And it's clear that this I test will flow through R1 
as well as R2 because there are no other uh, place for there is no other place for the current to go. Okay, we don't have nodes with more than two branches, so there is no other place for the current to go. So a current I test flows here. And if a current I test is flowing through R1, it will have a voltage I test times R1. Current I test is flowing through R2, it will have a uh, voltage of I test times R2. Okay. So between these two terminals, I will have a voltage which is this plus that from KVL. Okay, because this voltage plus that voltage minus this voltage taken from uh, bottom to top that will be zero. Okay, so the voltage in this direction would be I test R1 plus R2. So the voltage drop is proportional to I test and the proportionality constant is R1 plus R2. So if you know that if you have this resistance the voltage across that will be I test R1 plus R2. Okay. Now this looks like a lot of work for uh, deriving something so simple but everything that you do a lot of more complicated uh, derivations will be things like this. Okay. It will be based on a systematic application of uh, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law and also the relationship that governs each element. Okay, so that's why I showed this to you. Yes, please go ahead with the question. What is the question? Please go ahead with the question. Manoj Kumar. Okay. So a series combination of resistors will give a will be equivalent to a single resistance whose value equals the sum of resistors. Okay. So you can have uh, many resistors in series. R1, R2, R3, etc. Okay. When you have things in series, these intermediate nodes should not have any other connection. This uh, point should have only two elements, R1 and R2, like here, this has R2 and R3 and so on. If you have something else going off here, you cannot say that R1, R2 and R3 are in series. You also have to look at what is connected to this one. Okay. So in this case, this is equivalent to a single resistance, R1 plus, R2 plus, R3. Okay. Similarly, if you have resistances in parallel, we can determine what it looks like uh, between these two terminals. Okay. And let us say I apply a voltage V and I try to find the current. Okay. So, what I do is I will connect a voltage source V equals V naught and find out the current. Now it is clear that this voltage V naught appears across R1 as well as across R2. So this current here would be V naught divided by R1 and the current through R2 would be V naught divided by R2. And by applying KCL here okay, at a node we get the total current to be V0 by R1 plus V0 by R2. Okay. So the current is proportional to the voltage which means that it is a resistance or a conductance and the proportionality constant would be the conductance. Okay. Now if I write these in terms of conductances, the current here would be V0 times G1 where G1 is 1 over R1 and the current here is V0 times G2, where G2 is 1 over R2. Okay. So, the total current can also be written as V0 times G1 plus G2. 
So, this is equivalent to a single resistance whose conductance is G1 plus G2. When I write this, it means the conductance is G1 plus G2 or the resistance is 1 over G1 plus G2 which is 1 over 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 which gives you the well known formula for two resistors R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. For more than two resistors the formula will not look so simple but it is much simpler to think of uh, conductances when you think of resistances in parallel. Okay? The conductances will add up and if you have more than two resistors in series the resulting conductance will be the sum of individual conductances and from that you can calculate the resistance. Okay? So, let us say we had n resistances in parallel. Okay. So, the total uh, conductance would be the sum of uh, conductances where G1 is 1 by R1 and so on and the total resistance would be the reciprocal of that. Okay. So, this again is uh, obtained by the simple uh, experiment of connecting a voltage source and finding the total current. Okay? You can also find apply a current source and find the voltage that will give you the same answer, but uh, it will be slightly more cumbersome because when you have elements in parallel the voltage is the same across the elements. It is easier to do it with a voltage source and when you have elements in series the currents are the same through the elements. So, it is easier to apply a current source. Okay. Now, whether you apply a current source or a voltage source, you will get exactly the same answer, but uh, I am just pointing out that uh, using the voltage source or current source may be convenient in some occasions. Okay. Any questions on what we have done so far? Please go ahead. Any questions? Okay, there were no questions, but uh, somebody said if you have three resistances in parallel, the effective resistance would be R1, R2, R3 by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now, I assume this person obtained this as an extension of uh, R1, R2 by R1 plus R2, but uh, somebody already responded this is not correct. Okay. In fact, this cannot be the formula for a resistance. If you look at the numerator, you have a product of three resistances. So, the unit is ohm cube and the bottom you have ohms. So, this will have dimensions of ohms square, units of ohm square. Okay? So, this is not a resistance at all. So, you cannot extend it like this. What is true is that the resistance would be 1 by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. It will be R1, R2, R3 divided by the pairwise uh, product and the sum of those things and it is a very cumbersome thing to write. So, you may simply leave it as 1 by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. 
so intuitively it's uh, easy to see that uh, the conductances will sum up and it's the counterpart of the series connection where the uh, resistances will sum up okay so these are the elements we have considered so far now next is let's say we take a capacitor and we can connect them in series and parallel okay so let me first consider the parallel connection of capacitors c1 and c2 so what will be the equivalent of this looking from these two terminals I think many people answered this immediately. The answer is uh, C1 plus C2. Okay. Now we'll see how that is. Again, we will. Uh, if you use the uh, procedure systematically, you will get the answer uh, automatically. Okay, without any confusion. So again, I will choose to apply some voltage V of T. Okay. By the way, an independent uh, voltage source means that. The voltage value is independent of what current is flowing through it. The voltage value itself can be dependent on time. Okay. Now, in the initial parts of this course, we will by and large look at voltages which are constant with time. But the voltage can be independent. Voltage can be dependent on time. An independent voltage source really means that the voltage value is independent of the current flowing through it. Okay. So here I have to apply a time varying voltage because if the voltage is constant, we know that no current can flow through the capacitor. Okay. If I do that, C1 has a current a voltage v, v of t across it, and C2 also has V of t across it. Okay, so the current through this would be C1 times time derivative of uh, V of t, and the current here is. C2 times time derivative of V of t. Okay, so the total current drawn from the voltage source is C1 plus C2 times time derivative of V of t. Okay, so obviously this is exactly equivalent to having. A single capacitor of value C1 plus C2. Okay. The current going in here will be C1 plus C2 times time derivative of V. Okay. So a parallel connection of capacitors will uh, uh, give you an equivalent capacitance, which is the sum of all the parallel capacitors. Okay. Another way to think about it is, if you have multiple capacitors with a voltage V, then on this capacitor you will have a charge plus C V on the upper plate and minus, sorry, plus C1 times V on the upper plate, minus C1 times V on the lower plate and on the second one, you have plus C2 times V on the upper plate and minus C2 times V on the lower plate. So if you associate this terminal with one plate and this terminal with the other plate, you will see that on the effective upper plate you have C1 plus C2 times V. Okay, and that tells you that the capacitance is C1 plus C2. Okay. Similarly, if we have capacitors in series. What will be the equivalent looking into these two terminals? What is it going to be?
Okay, I am not going to show this. If at all any of you is not clear about it, you can derive it yourself. Again, I will say that you derive it while understanding every step of the procedure. You apply a current and measure the voltage. The result turns out to be a single capacitance C effective and 1 over C effective will be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Okay. Or for two capacitors you can have this formula C1 C2 by C1 plus C2. Okay. So a parallel combination of capacitors you get the sum of capacitance. A series combination of capacitors you will get a formula similar to that of resistances in parallel. Okay. The reciprocal of the total capacitance will be equal to the sum of reciprocals of individual capacitances when you connect capacitors in series. Okay. And exactly the same thing can be done for inductors. I will not uh, work it out. I will leave it as an exercise to you. If you have any difficulty, uh, try to work it out again following every step uh, rigorously. If you have any difficulty, we can uh, you can raise the question and we can discuss it in the one of the following lectures. Okay. So, we have a series combination of uh, inductors. What is this going to be equivalent to? As many answered correctly, this will be a single inductor of value L1 plus L2. And if you have two inductors L1 and L2 in parallel, okay, this will be equivalent to a single inductance L effective and the reciprocal of L effective will be the sum of reciprocals of all these inductance values. Okay. So, you can derive these things for yourself by applying a voltage or a current and finding the resulting current or voltage through the combination. When I say equivalent, there are these two terminals and these two terminals and between them the electrical behavior is equivalent. That is the IV relationship is equivalent. That is what is meant by equivalence. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Now, uh, we can look at certain extreme cases of uh, element values. Now, let me start with a voltage source. Now, you can call these terminals A and B if you wish. And I will say that the independent voltage source's value is 0. Okay. So, what will this be equivalently between A and B? My question is, we have an independent voltage source whose value is 0. So, what is that equivalent to?
Okay, so as many people uh, mentioned, it is equivalent to a short circuit because again, if this V equals zero, the voltage at node A has to be exactly equal to the voltage at node B. Okay, so that is like tying these two nodes together with a wire. Okay, so this is a short circuit. And similarly, let's say I have a current source whose value i equals 0. What is this equivalent to between A and B, nodes A and B? Again, the answer is pretty obvious. This is equivalent to an open circuit. An open circuit by definition does not allow any uh, voltage, any current between them. Okay, So, if you have an open circuit between two nodes, that means no current can flow from A to B. And this I equal to 0 means exactly that. Okay, And similarly, for a resistance, R. So, let us say R equals 0. Okay. And the voltage drop will be I times R. If R equals 0, the voltage drop will be 0. That means, V A will be equal to V B. Okay. And it is equivalent to a short circuit. So, resistance of 0 means that it will short the two nodes between which it is connected. And a resistance of infinity would mean that it is an open circuit. Okay, Because if a resistance is infinity, that means whatever voltage you have across this, the current through this, which is Vr divided by R, as R tends to infinity, will go to 0. That means no current can flow between these nodes through this branch. So, that is an open circuit. Okay, So, an infinitely large resistance is like an open circuit. Okay. Now, why are we looking at these things? Sometimes we have to evaluate these uh, extreme cases. Sometimes also you want to uh, reduce the value of some element to 0 or infinity and then see what happens to the circuit. Okay. So, if you know that it is a short circuit or an open circuit, you can very easily evaluate that. Okay. And let us say you have an inductance L and L equals 0. What would this be equivalent to? So, as many people said, this will be equivalent to a short circuit between A and B because the voltage across the resistor equals L times the time derivative of the current and it will be 0 if L equals 0. Okay. So, regardless of the current, the voltage will be 0. That means a short circuit. And similarly, if you have a capacitor, which is 0, this is an open circuit. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So, uh, we looked at extreme cases of certain elements. Okay. Because of some problem, the my browser closed instantly, and then because of that, the connection got broken. But uh, now it is back up, I believe. Okay. We looked at uh, extreme cases of uh, these elements, and in some cases they become open circuits, and some cases they become short circuits. Okay. Now we can look at a couple of other uh, special cases. So let me say that I have a voltage source V equals V naught and a current source I equals I naught in parallel. My first question is, is this connection allowed? Okay. For instance, we could not connect two voltage sources in parallel or current sources in series. Now I have a voltage source and a current source in parallel. Is this okay? Okay, looks like all of you agree that it is possible. Now I have these two terminals here. What will it look like? between these two terminals, this combination. We have a parallel combination of a voltage source V0 and a current source I0. So, from the two terminals, what will the combination look like? Now, when I say what it looks like, you have to tell me if it looks like some simple element that we have already discussed. Okay. For instance, when we had uh, two voltage sources in series, it still looked like a voltage source, but whose value was some of the individual values. Okay. Similarly, what will it look like here? I hope the question is clear. Now, the way to answer this question is like you do for uh, uh, any other circuit. Okay, So, you have these two terminals and you have to either apply a voltage and find the current. So, let me draw a box around this. What I am trying to find out is what the circuit looks like between these two terminals. What do we have to do? We have to either apply a voltage and find the current or apply a current and find the voltage. Okay. So, let me ask you this. If I apply a current I test okay, and measure the voltage here that is developed, what will that be? Okay, it looks like the question was not uh, clear. My question is, I have this voltage source and a current source in parallel 
and this is not very different from having let's say two resistors in parallel and so on right in principle it's similar problem you will end up with two terminals and you have to find out what the circuit looks like at those two terminals okay because i can have a box around this whole thing and i can call it a two terminal element okay there are only two terminals here. now the way to determine uh, what any electrical uh, two terminal element looks like is to either apply a voltage and find the current or apply a current and find the voltage okay so in this case i have also applied the current i test and i am asking you to find out what it uh, what the voltage developed is so what is the answer clearly this voltage source will enforce the voltage between these two nodes to be exactly equal to v not regardless of what current is flowing through that okay so the voltage across these two terminals will be equal to v not okay and this is also independent of the current we have applied okay so what does it mean if the voltage value is independent of the current that is applied that means that what is the equivalent element so we have this voltage source here what does it mean to have an independent voltage source it means that the voltage between its terminals will be always equal to v not okay independent of how much current is flowing and those two terminals are exactly the same terminals that are coming out so between these two terminals here we have v not independent of i test whatever current you apply okay by kirchhoff's law you know that the current that is flowing through the voltage source is i test minus this i not but that is not relevant how much ever current is flowing through that it will always maintain v not so this entire thing is equal into a voltage source of value v not okay now it doesn't matter if you connect a single current source or multiple current sources i could also connect a resistor here okay in fact i can connect anything i want i can have a voltage source and connect any other complicated circuit i will not show what it is but it is not relevant because this voltage source will say that the uh, voltage between these two values is v not okay so this whole thing is equal into just a voltage source of value v not okay any questions about this now somebody asked uh, if you measure the current will it become a current source no that's not the case because whichever way you measure it first of all uh, because it uh, appears like a voltage source you will not be able to connect a voltage source and measure it you will get an inconsistent condition okay now this can sometimes happen i said that uh, to test what a circuit looks like between two terminals you can either apply a voltage or apply a current and if you apply a voltage you measure the current and if you apply a current you can measure the voltage now there will be circuits where one or other of these things will not be possible okay that is let us say that i have this uh, silly circuit inside a box okay i have these two terminals and This is a black box. I just close it and give it to you. 
okay and i have a short circuit now what happens clearly you cannot apply a voltage to this okay if you do this you will see that you will get an inconsistent condition okay in fact somebody asked this question right at the beginning of the lecture if you have a voltage source and you apply a short circuit across a voltage source what happens so you can see that this is the sub case of uh, having two voltage sources in parallel and one of the voltage sources being zero because a zero volt voltage source is a short circuit so a voltage source which is short circuited is equivalent to a voltage two voltage sources in parallel whose values are not equal okay so that's not possible so in this case you cannot find what is inside by applying a voltage source because that gives you an inconsistent condition now this can happen many times okay so now this circuit is so simple by looking at it you see it's a short circuit but in reality the circuit that you are analyzing may not be so simple so it could be that you apply a voltage source and go through the calculations and you will find that you cannot uh, you will get some inconsistency or you will start getting infinities in the calculation in that case you abandon that and you apply a current source and see what is happening okay okay now for the same uh, uh, circuit if i apply a current let me not say v not this was v test this was what i applied to find out what is in the circuit and i apply i test to find what is inside so what it means is uh, what it says is because this is a short circuit regardless of whatever current is flowing there this node and that node will be at the same voltage okay so this voltage will be zero and this is zero regardless of i test so what does it mean you can think of it as either a zero volt voltage source or a zero resistance or a short circuit okay all of these are anyway equivalent to each other okay all of them are short circuits so that's why in this particular uh, example you cannot apply a voltage source and find the current because there is already a voltage source inside if you apply v test here and you work out the kvl equations you will see that the total voltage around the loop would be v test minus v not which is not necessarily zero okay so that can happen so it's not that if you apply a voltage here and find out the current it looks like a current source you cannot do that at all okay i hope this last part was clear what i was trying to say is in principle you can apply a voltage source find the current or apply a current source find the voltage for some particular circuits one or the other of these may not be possible okay Now one of the other questions is do current sources exist in practice and yes they do now in this course we will not worry about how to make them but uh, those of you who take courses on analog circuits know that there are uh, elements known as transistors with which you can make some things that are very good approximations to current sources okay and sometimes some natural sources of uh, signals like uh, photodiode and so on also behave more or less like current sources okay now the counterpart of this is a current source in series with some element what is this equivalent to i think all of you should be able to answer this pretty quickly now when i say equivalent to between terminals a and so again a uh, few of you have answered it's very clear that 
current I naught will be flowing here because of the current source. And if you think of this entire boundary, the current I naught has, has also to be flowing there because there is no local charge accumulation anywhere. Okay. So, the current cannot go off into some other uh, place. So, between these two, it is equivalent to a single current source of value I naught. Okay. So, as far as the terminals A and B are concerned, a current source, an ideal current source in series with something will look exactly like a current source. And this also applies to if you have a current source and a voltage source in series, the equivalent is a current source. Just like when we had a current source and voltage source in parallel, the equivalent was a voltage source. Okay. So, is this clear? Now, all of these things will become useful. Uh, sometimes what happens is in circuits, you will find these things in this fashion. Okay. The voltage source will be in parallel with probably a very complicated thing. You do not have to worry about that, all that complicated stuff. If all you are interested in is the voltage bit across the voltage source terminals. Okay. That will be equal to V naught regardless of what you connect to it. Similarly, a current source will maintain a current flow of I naught regardless of what is connected to it. Okay. Now, there will be some difference between these pictures. Okay. That is when I say voltage source and current source in parallel. And let us say this is connected to or let us say it is just not connected to anything else. Now, we know that this is equivalent to a single voltage source. When I say equivalent, we have to be careful where they are equivalent. As far as these two terminals are concerned, A, B, they are equivalent. Okay. That is, if I gave you this whole thing in a box and this thing in a box, you will not be able to tell the difference. Okay. Without opening the box. Now, there will be, I mean, uh, something different. That is, for instance, let us say nothing is connected to it. In this particular, in the upper box, a current of I naught is flowing through V naught. Okay. And here, nothing is flowing through V naught. So, the internal details will be different. But as far as the terminals, the external terminals are concerned, the behavior will be exactly the same. Okay. So, when we say equivalent, we have to also be careful about what exactly is equivalent between the different circuits. Similarly, if you have a current source and a current source and a voltage source, as you see from these two terminals, everything is exactly the same. What will be different is the voltage drop across the current source here and the voltage drop across the current source there will be different. Okay. I hope this is clear. Okay. So, now we have extensively discussed uh, what happens when you connect uh, elements in series and parallel. Lot of this is very simple stuff. And many of you already knew the expressions for many of them. But what I want to emphasize is that everything can be derived from the basic laws of circuits, Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law, and the behavior of each element. Okay. We have definitions of what is a resistor, what is a voltage source, what is a current source. From the basics, you can derive all these other external, uh, all these other additional stuff. Okay. Now, before I end the lecture, let me uh, just introduce you to a new type of element which are known as controlled or dependent sources. We have looked at uh, independent voltage and current sources. These controlled sources will also be either a voltage or a current source. But what is meant by controlled or dependent is that value depends on other electrical 
variables that is voltage or current in the circuit okay that is the uh, uh, let's say you have a controlled voltage source its voltage value will depend on some other voltage or some other current okay now based on uh, what kind of source it is and what it is dependent on we have four types of uh, control sources we have a voltage controlled voltage source which means that its voltage is dependent on some other branch voltage in the circuit some other uh, voltage in the circuit and we have a current control voltage source ccvs which means that the voltage source value depends on some branch current and similarly we have current sources we can have a voltage controlled current source vccs and a current controlled current source ccs okay here was lost temporarily that's why it was broken but uh, as i was saying we will look at control sources in the next class which is not going to be this thursday but next tuesday now are there any questions about this today's lecture yeah there are uh, questions about uh, the recorded session yes the recorded sessions will be put up online i think there was some delay in uh, putting up the recording of the previous lecture but uh, everything will be up shortly okay please go ahead there is a question hello pri pri please ask your question okay i think there is a question from priyanka when is the test uh, it's not decided yet but we'll announce it sufficiently in advance okay okay at the other terminal the network connectivity was lost so i'll try to answer uh, some of the questions now i hope uh, this uh, swarna i'm not sure if you heard my answer if uh, voltage source and current source are in parallel how do we calculate the current now a voltage source and current source in parallel is exactly equivalent to a voltage source and the current will be determined by whatever circuit is connected to it not by the voltage source okay so if you have details of that circuit you can find out the current then uh, let's see what is the average current in a capacitor now these are uh, i have to impose some conditions on uh, the operation but you can consider the average current in the capacitor to be zero okay now you can violate this by forcing a 
non zero average current into the capacitor but uh, we will not discuss those things here uh, there is something known as uh, steady state if you have, if your circuit reaches steady state then the average current in the capacitor will be zero okay then uh, which book should we follow for numericals i think the book by hayden kemerly has a very large number of uh, example problems i think you can use that and the uh, exact reference and the edition are given on the website the next session will be the next tuesday not this thursday okay now uh, there is also another question what will be iv curves of uh, practical independent voltage and current sources we will take it up later okay we will be able to do that okay then thank you all for attending we will close for today